If I had to choose one word to describe living paycheck to paycheck, it would be something like bondage. Because when you live paycheck to paycheck, you're restricted and you're chained to the weight of knowing that you're one mistake away from losing everything. And that means no house, no car, shelter, or food for your family. That weight is so heavy that I think it scars us to the point that it damages the way we view money. Because it feels like an endless loop of constantly working all the time, working hard, putting in several hours a week, putting in so much time and effort only to have little to nothing left over at the end of the month. And it can seem next to impossible to escape this bondage, but it doesn't have to be that way. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what steps you need to take to stop living paycheck to paycheck so that you and your family can have a brighter future. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance, personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I'll talk about saving money, making more money and getting out of debt. Let's get into this video. Now, living paycheck to paycheck is an issue that runs so deep that it's so much more complicated and psychological than you could ever imagine. So the first step is the most important and it absolutely cannot be ignored. The thing about living paycheck to paycheck is it's not always obvious. Like it's very easy to be living paycheck to paycheck and still make it seem like you're doing well. And it gets to a point where it's like we almost forget that we're in a financial situation. So the thought of even living paycheck to paycheck just goes to the back of your mind. And the problem is when this happens, we skip step one. We don't take a good look at ourselves, our choices, our decisions, and then we wonder why we're stressed out all the time and can't get a good night's sleep. Let's get real, because this is a real situation. You've gotta reflect and look at why it is that you're living paycheck to paycheck and get down to the details. And this isn't for any judgment. This isn't to feel stupid or sorry for yourself for any past choices that you've made. It's to understand one thing. How do I make sure this never happens again? Because growing up, I had a lot of family members and family friends who lived paycheck to paycheck and I had no idea because it seemed like they had money. Clothes were nice, the cars were nice, the houses, the TVs were big, everything was nice. They even had good jobs and it looked like everybody was successful and making good money, but the problem actually wasn't the amount of money they made, the problem was the money that they weren't able to keep. You know what I mean? So that's exactly why we have to look at ourselves because it's easy to see yourself as a victim and I've done this a thousand times. It's easy to see yourself as a victim of your circumstances right now instead of looking in the mirror and looking at your situation for what it actually is. Let's say the reason you're living paycheck to paycheck is because of some outside force that you have no control over because let's face it, that's how it is sometimes. By looking at yourself, you're seeing what you can do to change your situation. You see that change in thinking? Now you're viewing yourself as the hero instead of the victim. And if you've made financial mistakes just like all of us have, but those mistakes caused you to live paycheck to paycheck, then you take a step back and you reflect. You say things like, you know, I made a lot of decisions in the past that didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. You say, I thought I was doing the right thing, but I was wrong and it costed me. I got myself here, so I'm gonna take matters into my own hands and I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna come out on top. The most important thing to keep in mind when it comes to this step is emotions and egos have to be taken out of this. This won't work if you're making excuses for yourself saying, well, I wouldn't be living paycheck to paycheck if my boss would've just given me that raise that I asked for two months ago. You know what I'm saying? This won't work if you're just saying, oh, well, it's too late for me. I'm, I'm screwed. I'm in a situation and I will never get out of it. Because strong emotions are tied to those beliefs and you've got to cut those emotions off and realize that waiting on somebody to come to your rescue could take a lifetime. You are the hero that you've been waiting on. And once you do that, you can get real with yourself in order to find out that it was that car, it was that expensive car that you just bought that pushed you over to the point of living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe you were like me. Maybe you thought you could afford to live in a bougie neighborhood and ended up biting off more than you could chew and you ended up spending more money every single month than you could afford to spend. Maybe you have family members to take care of, but despite the reason, you can make small improvements that eventually allow you to stop living paycheck to paycheck. By small improvements, I mean small sacrifices, which feel like big sacrifices at first. The reason they're gonna seem like big sacrifices at first is because these methods that I'm about to go over with you will take you out of your comfort zone and they'll completely throw you off of your routine. Like, they'll force you to do different things and that can be overwhelming for a lot of people. I mean, the first time I put a budget together, I got overwhelmed because I knew that it was gonna take discipline and consistency over a long period of time. And I found that whenever something overwhelms me, I immediately start to try to talk myself out of it and I second guess the very reason that I made the decision in the first place. Then I start asking myself questions like, why do I even want to budget anyway? 
I make good money, why am I even budgeting? By the way, those are self-destructive questions. And whenever that happens, I immediately get discouraged. And it's either I discourage myself through negative self-talk or someone else gives their input like I asked for it and that discourages me. That's going to happen. But I never stay discouraged for long because I have a reason for my financial goals. I have very deep, strong emotions tied to my financial goals because my goals are much bigger than me. It's about my entire family, my future family, my immediate family members. Those are the people that I think about whenever I get discouraged or even if I just get complacent in what I'm doing. I want to build a better future for them. And for me, those emotions drive me and connect me to the future that I want. And that's basically just my very long way of saying that you have to build these very simple yet powerful money habits in order to build the future that you've always dreamed of. But you can't forget why you're doing them in the process because it'll feel like you're sacrificing too much for no reason. Now, this all boils down to just two things, tracking your spending and cutting your spending. That's it. Nah, that's way too simple. That can't be it, right? That was the exact same thought that I had when I first got started. But to answer your question, yes, that's all you need to do. Because when you do those two things, you'll, you'll realize two things that blow your mind. For one, you'll notice that you're spending way too much money on things that you don't need. And two, you'll notice a pattern in your spending habits. You see, it's easy for us to complain about spending too much money on rent, on utilities, or even on the internet bill. You know, okay, well, those bills are set, right? So what about the fact that you stop and get yourself some fast food every day throughout the week, every working day throughout the week? So Monday through Friday, five days a week, you're spending $35 per week, which is $140 per month, by the way, and you like to have fun during the weekend. So you hit up the movies, you'll hit up some bars, maybe some restaurants. The point is, it all adds up. It's easy to complain about not getting paid more at work, but you're walking around in $200 shoes, my guy. And you're waiting on tax season to get your tax refund. Do you know that you don't even have to wait for that? You can get every bit of your tax refund right now, but I'll talk about that more in a minute. Right now, just understand this. The whole theme of this video is stop waiting. And when you simply look at the amount of money that you spend on a daily basis, especially on things that you don't need, and you cut those from your expenses, you then give yourself the authority to correct your own mistakes instead of waiting on somebody to throw a million dollars at you. You see it all the time. Think about the lottery and the mega millions. You've seen it. Mostly everyone plays it, and they'll say something along the lines of, yeah, I know I won't win, but uh, it's worth a shot, right? And when I hear that, I definitely don't judge because I too would like to have $970 million fall into my lap. <laughs> but if you really think about it, how many of them live paycheck to paycheck? And I've got an even better question for you. Which is more likely, putting the work in to improve your financial situation or winning the lottery? The answer is obvious, right? But what happens is we fall into this me too category because it's human nature to do as everyone else does. Yeah, I'm more likely to get struck by lightning than winning the lottery, but you know what? Everyone else is buying themselves a lottery ticket. I'm gonna buy myself a lottery ticket too. And I bring that up for two reasons. One, lottery tickets are the prime example I'm talking about when it comes to cutting your expenses. Like if you're living paycheck to paycheck, I would not be buying lottery tickets, period. And two, that's the same trap that causes people to live paycheck to paycheck. And the trap is doing something just because someone else is doing it. Well, my neighbor across the street just got himself a Tesla, so now I've gotta go out and get myself a new car so I can one-up him. You know what I mean? My friend just went out on this exotic vacation with her fiance, so now I've gotta go out somewhere nice too. Just to put it on Instagram later, get a few likes, and sure, it'll look like you're winning for a little bit on Instagram, you know what I'm saying? But in real life, your bank account will be looking sick. Might as well just take a dollar bill and just rip it. Just, you don't need it no more. You don't need it no more. And the scary thing about this is living paycheck to paycheck is already uncomfortable. Like it's in the back of your mind all the time. You probably even talk about it and it makes you feel nervous and anxious. And here's the kicker. What do you do whenever you feel uncomfortable? Like let's say you're in a social event and you don't really know anybody, but there's a ton of people there. What is the first thing you do? Because me personally, I would find somebody I know and stay within that bubble. That's what introverts do. You might walk up to a random person and just spark up a conversation, but you're doing it so you can feel comfortable. Either way, you look at what I do or what you do in a social event where you don't know anybody, what we're doing is we're seeking comfort. There's nothing more dangerous than seeking comfort in an uncomfortable financial situation. That's what causes people to spend money they don't have on things they don't need so they can feel comfortable because they can afford it. 
you got to think it's uncomfortable for a reason. It means that if you ever want that feeling to go away, you have to act now. And the easiest way to do this is by putting yourself on blast. Whenever you're tracking your expenses, you need to look at every little thing that you don't need. Do this every single day. You can either do this on your phone or on a piece of paper. And I'm a millennial, so I do this on my phone. And you better believe after I saw the unnecessary things that I was spending money on, I cut them immediately because after a while, it got embarrassing. Like when you're aiming for a financial goal and you're letting a daily Chick-fil-A sandwich or a McDouble get in the way of your goals, Man, when I saw that I was doing that, I was kicking myself because in my eyes, letting my own vices like food get in the way of my progress is unacceptable. So you cut your expenses over and over again. And I'll give some quick examples because it's easy to become blind to what you spend unnecessary money on. Things like cable or subscriptions that you no longer use. It could be Audible, it could be Spotify, Netflix even. I mean, it's time to really start looking at what subscriptions you pay for but you no longer use. Or maybe you are still using a subscription but maybe it's lost its value to you. For example, I used to have this food service that would deliver food to my door and I would just warm it up. It would be pre-cooked. All I had to do was warm it up once it got to my place. But that lost its value to me and it costs over $100 a month. So I cut that out of my expenses. Plus it's way cheaper to grocery shop instead. I was just being lazy. And what I'm saying is something I found when I kept tracking my expenses over and over again, one thing kept coming up. One thing, can you guess what it was? Food. So when I found out that food was definitely my biggest expense, I started to cut back and I started to understand and, and figure out, you know, what amount of money I wanted to save every month so I could get to where I wanted to be. So I built a budget based on the way that I tracked my expenses and I stuck to it consistently. Each time I review my budget, I track my expenses along with it so I could see exactly where my money was going and I kept making changes to my budget, I cut one expense after another. Then out of nowhere, quarantine hit. There were no barbers that were able to cut my hair. Had your boy looking rough, so what I do, I cut my own hair and that saved me hundreds of dollars a year. And that's not to say that you should go out and cut your own hair, but I'm saying that there's something that you're paying for right now that you can totally do yourself. A lot of ladies watch my channel, y'all can do your own nails or get your friends to do your nails for you for free. And the guys out there, instead of ordering takeout or going out to eat for dinner just because you don't feel like cooking, you can cook that same burger at home and it'll taste better and it'll be better for you. Even though the quarantine, the virus and everything was going on, some good did come out of it because in a weird way, it forced everyone to become more independent instead of waiting and relying on other people to get stuff done for us because you know, everything was closed. So you'll start to make these small improvements, which again, feel like big sacrifices at first, but then you'll see, oh, I cut so many expenses that I didn't save $200 this month. Oh, carry, carry the two. I saved four, that's $400 that stay in my pocket this month. Go ahead with your bad self now. And it's because tracking and cutting your expenses becomes the primary focus and that's directly tied to your goals. And with that extra money, you'll put it into your savings account. And if you're in debt, some of it'll go towards debt while the rest of it goes into your savings account. Then you rinse and repeat. You continue to cut expenses where you can. And this might require some negotiation on your part where you're like, hey, Spectrum, y'all tripping with these prices, man. I've been a loyal customer for the past four years. How's about cutting me some slack? Of course you'd want to be more professional than that though, but I just happen to have strong feelings about Spectrum. But you know, then again you might have to compromise with yourself because everyone can't negotiate and every company isn't going to give you what you want when you want it all the time. So you can do like I did and go a full year and a half without paying internet at all. Like what I did instead was I used that free apartment Wi-Fi, you know what I'm saying, the one that everyone has access to. It was about slow, low key, cause you know, everyone, their mom used it, but uh, it got the job done, you know what I'm saying? Then you keep putting little by little into your savings over a consistent basis, and that's gonna get you to a point where you have your first couple thousand dollars saved in your savings account, and that's gonna be your buffer. And once you build up your buffer, you're gonna wanna keep adding money onto it, and then you'll eventually get to the point where you have extra money in your savings and in your checking every single month, so you will no longer be living paycheck to paycheck anymore. Now that's enough for most people to break that cycle, but unfortunately this issue is much deeper than most of us can even understand. And sometimes things happen, like car accidents, medical expenses, your child might need to get glasses because they just found out they have poor eyesight, I was the child who had poor eyesight. These things happen in life all the time. There's a ton of issues that can push someone far beyond living paycheck to paycheck to the point where they're in severe debt and they can barely make ends meet. 
And, you know, it's really damaging to see what this does to family. So what I would recommend to anyone, especially in this situation right here, is to find a way to make extra money. And there's actually a way to make extra money right now. When you're looking at your W-4, just adjust it, and that's how you get your tax refund money right now. You don't have to wait till the tax season comes. You can get it right now. And the beautiful thing about this is you can use that extra money that you're getting from your tax refund and you can put that into your savings because that money is yours anyways outside of that something i used to do was cut grass all the time i did all kinds of yard work i used to work ungodly amounts of overtime at work and i even set up a side business that of course costed zero dollars to set up but it generated me over two hundred dollars a month and i feel like i say that in every single video but it's true i taught some young youngins how to play the drums and that got me money every single month and you know, there's a lot of ways to make money. I just wanted to give you a quick list of things that I've personally done and I'd rather stick to things that I've done because I think it goes to show just how easy it can be to go out there and make some extra money. And believe me, there's a ton of ways that you can make money right now without going beyond your boundaries when it comes to your morals and your ethics. And I wanna leave you with this. In order to reach any of these goals, especially making more money, you've gotta ask yourself this big question. How bad do I want it? How bad do I want to stop living paycheck to paycheck? Because that will determine upfront the amount of work that you're going to put in, which will determine how quick you get out of living paycheck to paycheck. If you've made it this far and you live paycheck to paycheck, or you recently just got out of living paycheck to paycheck, share your story in the comments. I would love to hear about your journey. Anyways, that's the video for today. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Reggie Bryans, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.